Okay, here is the second lecture on treatments um, for psychological disorders. Uh, it's the third video, um, and this one may I may split it into two videos as well. Uh, but yeah, the second second lecture. So this one will be addressing <clears throat> anti-anxiety, antidepressant, antipsychotic drugs, and the primary neurotransmitter systems that each of them act on. Uh, we'll look at SSRIs and should be able to describe what an SSRI does at a synapse. Uh, we'll talk about current perspectives on herbal and natural products, and we'll end with some non-pharmacological biological treatments for psychological disorders, things like brain stimulation and psychosurgery. So this is just kind of, kind of an outline, the um, biological treatments that we'll address and those types of medications that you see there, and then brain stimulation and psychosurgery. Antipsychotic drugs are used to treat psychotic disorders, um, such as schizophrenia. There's this uh, dopamine hypothesis of schizophrenia, and that schizophrenia really has its roots in dysfunction in the dopamine system. And there, there is support for that in that uh, the degree of effectiveness of drugs at acting on the dopamine system appears to correlate well with their effectiveness of treating the symptoms. This uh, hypothesis has been updated. It's more complex. Um, newer drugs um, block both uh, dopamine and serotonin. Just as an FYI, these are some examples of some typical antipsychotics. Um, some older drugs called typical antipsychotics, and then some newer drugs called atypical antipsychotics. Uh, Thorazine is an old one. This is an old advertisement uh, from 1960, I believe, for Thorazine. Um, doesn't really employ the sensitivity towards <laughs> psychological disorders that um, we do now. Um, so Thorazine was one of the first. Um, Haldol, Chlorazil, Risperidol, and Zyprexa. These are just FYIs in case any of these, you may have heard of some of these drugs. Um, so just, um, just for your information. Anti-anxiety drugs, as the name suggests, these are used to help reduce fear anxiety. Um, the technical term for reducing fear anxiety is anxiolytic. So these are anxiolytic drugs. And these act primarily on the GABA system. GABA is the primary inhibitory neurotransmitter in the brain, so it's going to make neurons less likely to fire and kind of calm things down. Some examples are benzodiazepines, like diazepam, lorazepam, and alprazolam. <laughs> Uh, or Xanax, and those are the, the, the trade names there, Valium, Ativan, Xanax. Antidepressant drugs, uh, these help increase positive mood, reduce negative mood. Selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors are the most common. So selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, they inhibit the reuptake of serotonin. So reuptake is the process of kind of vacuuming up those neurotransmitters after they've been released from one neuron, the neuron that's doing the talking, um, and after they've sent the signal, uh, or while they're sending the signal and binding to receptors on the receiving neuron, reuptake is kind of sucking up those neurotransmitters to kind of reset the system so that the, the neuron that's talking uh, can send the signal again. Now, if you block that reuptake, then serotonin is going to hang out in the synapse longer, and it's going to actually exert a stronger signal. So don't be fooled by the, the word inhibitor in there. These are actually, they actually enhance serotonin function. Okay, so they don't inhibit it. Some examples that you may have heard of, Prozac, Celexa, uh, Paxil, are um, SSRIs, and... SNRIs are also used as antidepressants. They block both serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake. That's another neurotransmitter that's involved in things like attention and arousal. And Effexor is an example of one of those. So this is um, a, a figure you probably recognize from your textbook, but I love showing this to classes and having them guess what is on the x-axis. 
you can see prevalence of major depression on the y-axis here, and I've, I've blanked this out for now. Um, something gets higher and the, the prevalence gets lower. And this is actually the uh, fish consumption in pounds per person in these different countries. So maybe you've heard of omega-3 fatty acid um, being effective to treat depression. Uh, these are um, this St. John's wort uh, phototherapy. These are some examples of remedies supported by research to actually be effective in, in treating um, psychological disorders. There are some issues though with um, herbal and natural products. Um, they're more, 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 more readily available. Um, they're often cheaper, don't require a, a prescription. Uh, so there are some advantages for sure, but uh, they're not monitored by the FDA for safety and effectiveness. Uh, the, the potency and, and dosage of these different um, active ingredients is going to vary by brand. Um, so use with, with caution and judici judiciously. Um, there's definitely a lot of research worth doing on them, but not all of them have research to back them up. There's definitely a lot of herbal and natural products out there that have, have no evidence to back them up at all. All right, non-pharmacological biological treatments. Uh, electroconvulsive therapy. Um, I'll post the, um, the video um, here, uh, which... Um, so yeah, this video I'll, I'll post in the description, just provide some first-hand accounts of um, electroconvulsive therapy, um, shows you what a session looks like. There is uh, There are popular depictions of this that um, make it seem like a, a mad scientist kind of thing. Um, really it's, a, it's done under anesthesia, um, it's very well controlled. Uh, it involves a brief electrical shock applied to the brain. It's not like it's you're being zapped for an hour. It's less than one second. What it does is it induces a seizure. And this technique has been employed for a long time, uh, and it's still not fully understood how it works, how it is effective, but it, it is a very effective uh, treatment, inducing this um, seizure um, briefly in the brain. This is typically more of a last resort treatment, though, because it is uh, more intensive and requires uh, a lot of staff and, you know, anesthesi and as an anesthesiologist, and um, is more expensive. Um, and there's also some uh, side effects of memory loss. Uh, so typically, you, you will have gone through all the other options, psychotherapy, medication, combinations of them, um, before um, you become a candidate for ECT. Yeah, so uh, as I mentioned, some side effects, disorientation, short-term memory loss, and sometimes headaches, muscle aches. Um, there's a muscle relaxant that's administered um, prior to, so it's... it's um, as I mentioned, it's very well controlled and it's, it's highly effective uh, for severe depression. But uh, just because of the intensive nature of it and the side effects, um, it's usually more of a last resort option. Transcranial magnetic stimulation has its roots in, in ECT. It's, uh, it's um, stimulating the brain directly, um, but it's much more mild, and it does not induce a seizure if, if done properly. There's there's some, a little bit of risk for that, but but this instead of uh, electricity um, involves a magnetic pulse into the brain, uh, TMS uh, or magnetism and uh, electricity, of course, are related though, kind of two sides of the same coin, and so a magnetic pulse is going to um, stimulate neurons to fire action potentials, which is an electrochemical um, impulse. This has minimal side effects, uh, sometimes headaches a little bit, um, but it's FDA approved for um, depression, uh, for treatment resistant depression, so this is also something that you would not likely do unless you had already 
tried uh, the lineup of the medications and talk therapy just because it's a it does involve more more time it's it's expensive um, it's uh, treatments uh, every day for a few weeks this is under investigation for other disorders in addition to depression uh, schizophrenia addiction um, and others uh, I've I've seen studies I think for uh, OCD and um, anxiety bipolar so uh, just kind of uh, putting these side by side both non-invasive brain stimulation measures and both used only after less drastic dra less drastic measures haven't worked but these are kind of the, the, the contrast uh, electrical versus magnetic mild risk of seizure versus one is actually inducing a seizure under controlled conditions uh, ECT has those um, side effects and TMS doesn't have any major side effects really psychosurgery uh, the most famous or, or infamous rather psychosurgery that's uh, been performed um, in the past is called a lobotomy this is actually a Nobel Prize winning procedure but is not performed anymore um, it led patients who were very uh, um, uh, very severe <laughs> psychotic patients and um, who had a lot of uh, trouble were hard to manage uh, made them much more docile but they also kind of became uh, more like vegetables um, uh, non-responsive and more childlike and it really it involves uh, destroying connections between the prefrontal cortex and the rest of the brain uh, so it's it's a pretty drastic procedure uh, it was actually pretty simple to do though there was um, there were blades that were inserted just behind the eye um, through the bone and just kind of swished back and forth um, so anyway kind of a <laughs> cringy um, procedure and uh, it's uh, fortunate that it's unfortunate that, that it was ever performed and fortunate that it's not anymore there is still brain surgery performed for disorders today though but it's uh, uh, more more focused and uh, of course done under much more controlled circumstances a cingulotomy is one example uh, which is shown to be an effective treatment for OCD. Uh, the cingulate cortex is this region of the brain um, right here uh, along the midline and removing that in um, at least in part um, has doesn't have very major side effects and uh, has been shown to be effective um, in treating some disorders. Deep brain stimulation or DBS this involves implanting electrodes into the brain and stimulating deeper regions of the brain. So this does involve surgery. Uh, does involve surgery. So this is again a, more of a last resort um, option. This is widely used for Parkinson's disease, um, and is also there's also evidence that it's effective for depression for severe cases of depression, OCD. Um, there has been some controversy over over that in the past, um, but yeah. A, a, method that's used for Parkinson's and being um, investigated for other uh, or for psychological disorders. All right, that's it.